TV 9 and 10, Northern Michigan's news leader, this is the Nightside Report. Well, they want a change in the government, and they say they'll do almost anything to get that change. They are a volunteer citizens military group that calls itself the Northern Michigan Regional Militia. TV 9 and 10's Dee Morrison met them on their training ground and has more on what they're all about. They're your neighbors, friends, maybe even your family. They're the Northern Michigan Regional Militia, a citizen's military group. Their literature describes them as an offshoot of the National Guard, and they're spreading across the country. In just eight months, the group has grown from three men in Emmett County to hundreds in 65 counties across Michigan and in 26 states across the U.S. We have uh, federal officials, bureaucrats, and tyrants that are perverting the Constitution. And we are, are um, ideally sending a real strong message that the people are saying enough is enough. Because as I said, the movement is going throughout the country. Members say they're against the United Nations and the idea of world government. They want citizens to regain control over American lawmakers and cite the crime bill and the handling of the Waco, Texas cult as evidence of a federal government out of control. Here were a number of people, innocent, guilty, or whatever, is immaterial. They never had due process, and that's what upsets the people. While many people may agree with the principles of the group, it's the weapons that scare some away. But the members do say they have the constitutional right to bear arms, and they're willing to use them if it comes down to that. We can turn our government around, but uh, in case we can't turn it around, we do need to be prepared. Today, the group practice search and rescue techniques, sharpshooting, and working as a team. They say they're willing to use their skills in serving their communities in whatever way is needed. In Wolverine, I'm Dee Morrison for TV9 in 10, the news leader. Now, the militia says they welcome any volunteer to their group, and they don't discriminate on the basis of age, sex, race, or religion. More people here in northern Michigan are arming themselves with guns, and while plans to get gun owners together have come under fire in some communities, it looks like others are now following suit. Our Paul Newton has that story. Some say it's alarmist, others common sense, but more and more Michigan gun owners and other residents are organizing themselves into community militias. Since some tried to shoot down plans for a Petoskey area militia this summer, other firearm owners now say they're under the gun to defend their rights, but say a militia is about more than just the Second Amendment. We need to be aware of how to survive in this world, um, but the big thing is we're trying to get out the truth to people, trying to open people's eyes as to what is happening in this country. Kennedy says so far over a hundred people in Grand Traverse, Benzie, Wexford, and Manistee counties have shown their support for a militia division. While to some that means over 100 guns in the neighborhood, others say organization is the safest way to manage what can be a helping hand in a crisis. Militia is basically by the Constitution a front line. And the police have been on the front line for years and years and years. They need to work together. Local law enforcement officials say they are aware of efforts to organize area militias across the state. And even if that doesn't mean arsenals of arms and ammunition, they say there's still cause for some concern. But as long as the groups are acting under the letter of the law, they say there's not much they can do to keep gun owners from getting together. The Emmett County militia got off the ground last spring. More than 60 other communities already have organized divisions across the state. I'm Paul Newton for TV 7 and 4, your 24-hour news station. And are they crime fighters? They are the unknown patriots, Michigan secret soldiers who say they will gladly die to protect their constitutional rights. And the Legion? Tonight, Target 7 follows Michigan's militia as they pledge to walk in our founding father's footsteps and fight a government which they say is out of control. You'll see what makes these people tick and why they may soon explode. Tonight and tomorrow, Watch this report only on the Action News Update at 11, right here on Channel 7. Well, Guy, I've made a couple of trips up north. I've spent many hours with these men and women, and I can say that they're not white supremacists, although some of those people may be drawn to the, to the group. They're not survivalists, although they receive that kind of training. They claim they are defenders of the Constitution who will lay down their lives for your rights, including the right to bear arms. They believe without weapons, there is no way to keep the tyrants, as they like to call them, or our government in check. 
Now keep in mind what you're about to see is not the Army, it's not the National Guard. This is a citizen's militia, armed and ready to fight our government. Deep in the woods, not far from the resort town of Harbor Springs, gunfire pierces the cool fall air. It's the sound of a Chinese-made SKS assault rifle, the sound of the northern Michigan militia. I think we're on a slippery slope leading, leading to civil war. Actually, we have a constitution that was given to us by our founding fathers. I'm willing to die for them. I'm willing to die for Christ, too. Dennis, you copy? I would say the militia is very well armed. Uh, how well armed is America? They're armed, but they won't say how many weapons they have. And they're preparing for battle with a government they claim is out of control. Their evidence? I think it can pretty well be summed up in four little letters, W-A-C-O. The tragedy at the Branch Davidian compound in Texas. What really happened there was the destruction of a church under the United States flag in the color of law. When our own army and navy decides to stand against the Constitution of the United States of America, we'll call on a higher court. Who are these so-called freedom fighters who can quote the early American patriot Patrick Henry as quickly as they quote the scriptures? They are a patch quilt of rural gun owners. This rifle was built in 1912. These are just fine old firearms. Military veterans and patriots disenchanted with the political system. We call our legislators and they don't listen. Uh, they go ahead and do what they want to do. Um, we vote, but... It doesn't seem to make a difference. The militia claims it has soldiers in 65 of 83 Michigan counties. The day we visited, they signed up nine new recruits. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the... The Second Amendment is near and dear to the hearts of many militia members. They point to the passage of the crime bill as evidence that our rights are being trampled on. The military has a weapon. They're called defensive weapons. But if the civilians have that same weapon, they're called what? Assault weapons. Why? Why? Somebody tell me why. They are trying to stop us either legislatively or they are trying to stop us in a strategic engagement. Norm Olson is the state commander of the Northern Michigan Militia. He's a 22-year veteran of the Air Force who opened up a gun shop in Lansing last year. The militia headquarters in Mountville. Many militia members buy their weapons here. Olson is also the minister of the Calvary Baptist Church in Brutus. You need to get one of these if you don't have one. Olson mixes religion with politics by starting each sermon with an update on the militia. Whether Olson is preaching the gospel or guns, his message attracts militia members to his church. Commander Ray Southwell is a deacon here. Southwell took us to the woods near his home where the militia first formed last April. Because at that time, again, there's a tremendous amount of fear being involved in a militia, even though we're not doing anything unlawful. Southwell put his home in his wife's name and discarded his worldly possessions, preparing for the end. I foresee, and this is the scenario that I picture, um, within two years, there'll be an economic collapse or hyperinflation. Unless there is a immediate turnaround for our country spiritually, morally, in law, there will be. There will be conflict. It's inevitable. Last weekend, Target 7 went into the brush with the Northern Michigan Militia. Today, it's a search and rescue mission. A young boy is lost. We're going to transport him over this fence. Drop that fence down. Drop it on. Push but it if you think these secret soldiers are a northern Michigan phenomena, guess again. Uh, this is a voicemail system here. Using computers, fax machines, and video equipment, the militia keeps in touch with its soldiers in 65 counties, including the metro Detroit area. You know, there are some people that are going to listen to this and they're going to say, these guys are dangerous. These guys are nuts. And what would you say to them? We're not. We're Americans. I mean, we're regular working people. It doesn't get any simpler than this. Don't tread on me. Militia leaders emphasize they will only strike in defense, but they are vague about at what point the militia would fight back. If you think the militia movement is only gaining momentum in northern Michigan, watch tomorrow night. These secret soldiers are closer than you think. 
should point out that there's nothing against the law here. This is constitutionally protected, but obviously they're preparing for this strategic engagement. Or what circumstances would they launch it? Yes. Know? When would they send out an alert? They send out alerts on a daily basis about various things that happen throughout the state. Uh, and they're rather vague about at what point they would actually take up arms and go defend someone. They say if a Waco-like incident occurred again, they would be there and they would fight. That's interesting. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, good to have everyone here today. Uh, I'm not the commander. My name is Ray Southwell. I'm the information officer for the Northern Michigan Regional Militia. We are quite pleased to uh, be here in Battle Creek, and I appreciate the courage that all of you had to come out and hear about uh, what we've done in Northern Michigan uh, in forming a constitutional militia. Um, in listening to uh, the last speaker and many of your questions, I can appreciate that there's a lot of anger out there. And uh, give us about an hour, all right? We're going to explain what we've done. We're going to explain to you the who, what, when, why, and how we put our militia together. So please, save your questions for the end, and uh, feel free at the end to ask those questions. I want to kind of just share with you that on April 29th of this year, 28 men met in the woods. At that time, we were very frightened about forming a militia, so we met in the woods on private land. Our cars camouflaged in the woods, so we could do this without uh, anyone being aware of it. That was on the 29th of April. 28 men came together. At that time, we elected our commander. Our commander is Norm Olson. He's here. He's going to be speaking to you in just a minute. Shortly after that time, we decided that it was best to go public, and we'll be sharing the reasons why we did that. I see some other members of militias here, and I want to encourage you to also go public. Very important. At this time, I'd like to have our commander, Major Norm Olson, come on up and speak to you. Thank you, Ray. A man walked into a hardware store and he said, I need a tool to cut a half-inch hole in a two-by-four. And the hardware store owner said to him, he said, do you want twist drill or do you want a spade drill? Well, I want a tool to cut a half-inch hole in a two-by-four. Well, do you want cold steel or will uh, hardened steel do? He says, listen, mister. I said, uh, he said, all I need is something to cut a half-inch hole in a two-by-four. And after listening to politicians, I feel, I feel a little bit like I'm talking to hardware store owners. Enough is enough. What I need is liberty. What I need is freedom. And you need to listen very closely to what we're going to tell you this afternoon. We've had enough. Enough is enough. And I serve notice to all of the tyrants. I serve notice to FDR and the New Deal. I serve notice to Lyndon Johnson and the Great Society. I serve notice to Bill Clinton that enough is enough. And we're here and we're not going to go away. Yeah. We've had it. Enough is enough. You've talked about wars of revolution. I talk about a war of liberation. I talk about securing something for our posterity that we need to do. I mean, you read these words etched on this statue behind me. And those words cannot be etched deeply enough or indelibly enough to give the true meaning of what loyalty and devotion and honor is all about. We've pretty well fallen asleep at the controls in our country, and enough is enough. It's time that we stand up. It's time that we speak up, but by God, it's time that we wake up. And if we're going to be the men and women of honor, if we're going to have the dignity, and if we're going to have the principles that God intended that free men and women ought to have, then we're going to have to do the job. We've fallen asleep, and it's time to wake up. Yeah. The militia is the answer. Now listen to me very closely. I retired after 21 years in the Air Force, and then I took a job as a school teacher. I taught school for seven years, and then I took a job as a pastor, and I'm pastoring a little Baptist church up in the woods, up in northern Michigan. I find that the congregations never change. Whether I'm talking to men in uniform, or whether I'm talking to school children, or whether I'm talking to people in a congregation, the audience doesn't change, nor does the message. I've got something to say, and you've got to listen. Many of you are military members. Many of you have retired from the service. Many of you have served honorably. Let me say this to you. You've raised your hand and you, you signed on the dotted line. You raised your hand and you vowed to protect this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You have never disannulled that vow. And let me say this. If you were willing to die for your country then, then you're willing to die for it now. Enough is enough. It's time that we wake up. It's time that we stand up. And it's time that we speak up. 
One of the framers of our Constitution said that what we obtain cheaply, we esteem lightly. It is dearness that gives everything value. And I say this, that it's not until you lose your freedom that you wonder whatever happened, how was it ever taken away from us? When we came together on April 29th, we realized this is probably the last option before armed and open warfare. I say to you today that unless the attitude of this country changes, unless the spirit of this country changes, then warfare, armed rebellion, is inevitable. And I don't want that. I want to protect my children from that. When you look at your children this afternoon, when you go home and you look at those little grandchildren, you hug them close. And now one day you're going to be in a graveyard someplace and those people are going to come out and they're going to look for you and that gravestone. God help you if they have to push the weeds away. God help you if they come out there to curse your name and your memory because you didn't stand in the valiant hour. But how wonderful it would be if they came out and said, come on, let's talk about Grandpa. Let's gather around this, this, this gravestone and, and talk about Grandma. How she and how he stood. And how they gave the last full measure of their loyalty and their devotion and their honor to a principle. And that principle is freedom. And that principle is dignity. We need to form militias. The militia is legal. The militia is, is constitutional. And if you're going to form a militia, we are going to tell you how to do it, and we're going to tell you how to do it quickly. Let me say this, that the hour is desperate. Time is running out. You've read enough literature. You've heard enough rhetoric. You've watched enough programs. You've listened to enough rumors about black ninja turtles jumping out of helicopters and UN troops amassing along the Canadian border. Good night, nurse. There's a thousand rumors. But what about reality? What about reality? If you want to take this nation back, think about eating an elephant. <laughs> you don't eat it all at once. You just grab hold and start gnawing where you are. And I say to you that we can take back Michigan, and we can take it back county by county. We can establish 83 strong constitutional and legal brigades in this, in this state. And when we do, and when our numbers rise, and when we're organized, and when we're legitimate, and when we are, are, are visible before all, then perhaps one day, one day, we won't have to go groveling to the politicians begging. They'll come to us asking us, what do you want me to do? That'll be a change, won't it? A refreshing change. Jefferson, <laughs> Jefferson said that when the government fears the people, you have what? Liberty. But when the people fear the government, you have tyranny. You know the words. You know the words. And I say this to you who may be weak-hearted. If you love wealth more than liberty, and you love the tranquility more than, the, than the, uh, the, the animating contest of freedom, then go home in peace. We ask neither your counsel nor your arms. Crouch down and lick the hands that feed you. May your chains rest lightly upon your shoulders. And may posterity forget that you were ever our countrymen. This is our finest hour, gentlemen, ladies. This is the time when we have to stand up. When we formed the militia, we realized that it was going to have to be formed based upon three principles, legitimacy, organization, and visibility. You will find that you cannot achieve one without the other two. You cannot escape and run back up into the woods. Many people are here today, and I applaud you for being here, but I say unto you that ten times this many wanted to come, but they were afraid to come out in public. Don't be hidden. Walk out from under the shadows. Walk out from behind your barriers and your fears. When your fear turns into righteous indignation, then America can use you. But we can't use you if you're sniveling and afraid to take back liberty. You've got to want it so badly that you're willing to die for it. And I say unto you that unless you've already died to yourself, then you'll never achieve the principles that are nobly engraved in this rock behind me and also in the Constitution. Every one of those men who signed their name on the Constitution and, and gave their name to the Declaration of Independence pretty well signed away their death warrant. They pretty well gave away their life. They realized that they had died already. And until you're ready to die to self and live for a higher principle and a higher calling, that which many, many, many have already given the last full measure for, then you're not worthy to be called a patriot. You're not worthy to join a militia. You're not worthy to stand with the other brave, those who are buried in, in the South Pacific and Normandy's beaches. You're not willing to stand with those who stood at Lexington and Concord. Don't even be named with those people. 
They would be ashamed if they saw what was happening to America today. If Patrick Henry were here today, he would weep before you openly, wondering how so many who had gone on before and had given all, now have left it to us who have given it all away. And I say unto you, stand up, speak up, but by God, wake up first of all. You're going to need the legitimacy. You're going to need the organization. You're going to need the visibility. You need that. Let me say this also, that when you form your militias, you form them according to an organizational structure. Many of you who are military people already understand what that organizational structure is. You and your brigades elect your own commander. Let the commander appoint his command staff. Let the command staff work together to appoint the lieutenants who are going to be the, the uh, squad leaders in those various elements and those, those uh, uh, needed portions of your brigade unit. And all working in concert, working together, and the brigades across the state networking one with another till 83 brigades established, up and running. We can convey information from one brigade to the other. We can tell brigades where there's trouble in America, where there's trouble right here in our state. And by God, let us never stand by and watch what happened at Waco happen here in America and again. And never, never, never in Michigan. When I saw what happened out there and realized after the time, you know, I, I believe I'm like many of you. We sat around and watched it like a soapbox a drama. We waited and waited and waited in 50 days, just waiting for the culmination of, of that, that terrible tragedy out there. And what you really saw was a church being destroyed and bulldozed under the color of law, under the American flag. You may not agree with those people out there, but they had every right to practice what they were practicing out there. So do you. And I don't care whether your God is a Buddhist God, or your God is a Muslim God, or your God is a God of uh, Jehovah. I tell you this, that that's what America is all about. Let me say this also, that you have to recognize... You need to recognize three things when you start your brigades. We talked about legitimacy, we talked about organization, we talked about visibility. You need to be visible. You need to meet and muster. You need to come together for your assemblies. You need to come together dressed in camel and web gear. You need to be carrying your rifles. Let me say this, no one will listen to you unless you do. I know that for a fact. When you get together for your brigade assembly meetings, you open in prayer. I, I, I encourage you, I implore you to find a good chaplain to lead your brigades in prayer and to keep the spiritual elements so that you can keep your focus, keep your mission precise, keep your goals in sight. Because if you lose goals and if you lose sight of your objective, you're going to get off course. And for that reason, I ask you all that when you form your brigades in the 83 counties in Michigan, form your brigades according to three guidelines. Number one, please, please do not let your brigade become political. Follow no one political candidate or one political party. Remember what America is all about. We fight for the right for you to stand up here and talk to the politicians and to ask the hard questions. We fight for his right to, to lie to you if he wants to. That's his right. After all, this is American. Everyone has a right to show their ignorance. That's, the way, that's what America is all about. Don't become political. Let me say this also. Don't become racist. Please don't become racist. There's enough hatred out there. There's enough hatred for the races and for religious groups. Stay away from it. Don't get off track. So don't become political, don't become racist, and don't become denominational. I'm a Baptist preacher, all right? I serve the Lord God Jehovah, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I serve the God of the Bible, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm a saved, born-again, Bible-believing, uh, hell-hot, heaven-high, Jesus-saved Christian, all right? But I don't know what you are, and it doesn't matter to me. That's what the American experiment was all about. And I believe that it's your right to practice your religion or not to practice your religion according to the dictates of your own conscience. I believe that, and I'll fight and die for your right to practice that. But don't follow the tenets of one organization. You'll get off course. You'll get off track. What we've put together is a booklet, the constitutional purity in our booklet, I believe, speaks for itself. We went through the booklet and we made sure that we would neither become political, denominational, or racial. We went through the booklet and we tried to keep as pure constitutionally as we possibly could. So that if ever one day someone raised their finger and accused us of anything, of any wrongdoing, we would have to say guilty. Because we would be guilty of the very same crimes that those men who signed their name on the Declaration of Independence were guilty of. The very same crimes. And I say to you, be politically clean, 
be racially clean. What I mean by that is do not become racial, and please do not become denominational in that you follow just one strict tenet. Invite everyone to come in. Invite everyone. You need in your brigade, you need minority people. You need Mexican Americans or those people from Latin descent. You need the black people in your brigade. You need the Jewish people and, and people from the Islamic faith and Buddhist faith. You need American Indians, the Native Americans. You need them in your brigade. So that no one, no one, no one can point a finger at you and accuse you of any wrongdoing. For you are Americans. And this flag that we stand beneath today means that to all people in America. Let me say this also. When you form your brigades, I ask that you watch out for three elements. There are the moles and the provocateurs and the dissipators. The moles are plants. They're in there to find out all about you. They're working for someone else. You'll have them, we have them. There are also the provocateurs. The provocateurs are the ones that come in. As soon as they get the badge and the uniform, all of a sudden they start bringing in the distrust. They bring in the division. They bring in the conflict. They bring in all of the, all of the types of, of uh, uh, headbutting contests and the arguing that waste time. Thirdly, you're going to have dissipators. Dissipators are those that come in and they seek leadership positions, and once they get the leadership position, they get the brigade off course. And what is the course of the brigade? The course of the brigade is simply this, to secure, to secure that which is already ours. And I say this, we should ask our God four things. God, give us the wisdom to determine what's right. Give us the faith to believe that which is right. Give us the courage to step out to secure that which is right. And God, give us the strength to hold it fast that which we have secured. And if God will give us that, then we will see victory. Not for ourselves only. Once again, I say unto you, you must die to yourself, for you serve a higher principle. That principle is liberty and freedom. That principle is goodness and righteousness and justice. That principle is the very same thing that beats in the heart of our God. And God goes up for us in this righteous battle that we face now. The tyrants are trying to destroy our America. The tyrants are trying to spit upon the grave of our valiant dead. The tyrants are tearing up our Constitution and riddling it and mocking our God even before our face. And just like David, as he walked out there at the, at the battlefield and he saw Saul's army all hunkered down, he looked at the army out there and he looked up at the generals and he looked down at the colonels and back at the majors and all the way down to the privates. And he said, he said, is there not a cause in Israel? Isn't there a reason? Who is this Philistine that mocks our God? And who are these politicians today that mock our God, the God of righteousness and goodness and justice? Who are these presidents and these Congress people? Who are these people that turn their face and mock our God of righteousness, goodness, and justice? And I say unto you, there is no justice left in our land. And this is now given to us, men and women. This is our finest hour. And we must take it back. We must. Because if not us, who? And if not this, what? And if not now, when? And if not here, where? Will we wait any longer? That's the question. You will form brigades in your counties. The counties, if the counties are large and have large populations within the counties, form companies according to townships. Now let me explain what the uh, militia concept is all about for the state of Michigan, or the state called Michigan, actually. It is a real thing. The state Michigan is, has a militia concept based upon four divisions, the Superior or the uh, Upper Peninsula Division, the Northern Division, which is the First Division, Central, Second, and then the Southern Third. We're in the Southern Division right now. We've come down from the First Division, I'm sorry, the Second Division up in the uh, Northern uh, Region to be with you here today to show you how to get your brigades up and running. Meet, elect an officer who can be your commander, give him the rank of major, your staff officers, hold the rank of captain, you organize, you speak, you have rallies like this today, you're out in the open. And what we want to do is be able to coordinate and network across the state so that anything that happens, we'll be able to get in touch with other brigades. If you have trouble down here, we'll be here to help you. What we mean by that is this. There are good and bad causes. If you are doing drugs or you're mixed up in something that's clearly illegal, I ask you this, get rid of that stuff, put it aside. Listen, you'll discredit and taint the militia, 
If they connect lawbreakers, if they connect lawbreakers with the militia, then we'll lose our purity. Remember I told you about the provocateurs and the moles and the dissipators? There are those people that their whole intent is to, dis to discredit the militia. We've already involved ourselves with that. Captain Southwell will be talking to you a little bit about that, the, the discrediting. But keep it pure. Watch out for that. Keep your lives pure. Keep your lives holy. Keep your lives just before God, all right? And other men. Remember this. Stand up. You're an American, my friends. Patrick Henry said, I'm not a Virginian. I'm an American. He had lost the colonial identity of his state. He found himself now standing with 43 others in that, in that Constitutional Congress. And he said, I'm not a Virginian, I'm an American. He said that a hush fell over that room as that thought sunk deep into the hearts of those men assembled there. We are Americans. My cause is your cause. My children belong to you. Remember back when you kept an eye open for the other children in the neighborhood? Remember back when you watched out for your neighbors? Remember when your responsibility was that for your neighbor's safety and well-being? And now we've all turned into pretty much isolated people, haven't we? When cable TV is more important to us than liberty, and getting the crabgrass out of the lawn is more important than getting the scoundrels out of the Congress. And I say unto you, we've got to get back to that old ethic. And what is that ethic? Well, I'm not going to preach, but let me tell you this. It's called the law of Christ. It's the law of love. It's brotherhood is what it is. It's my caring for your children. It's you watching out for my children. And God help the scoundrels and the moles and the slugs. God help those people that would ever lay a hand upon our children. And I say to you that there are those who are trying to do it to put the chains of slavery and tyranny upon those children's shoulders. And I don't know about you, and I don't know what course you'll take, but I know what course I'm going to take. And I say, as Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. I'm not going to stand by while this country just goes farther and farther into chaos, torn apart by those people who care not one bit about what that flag means. So I don't know where your heart is, and I don't know whether you've got enough courage. I don't know whether you're here today simply because you're curious or whether you're courageous. Time will tell. Many of you have been hurt. Many of you are afraid. And let me tell you about four groups of people that are going to be of, in, available to come into the militia. And then I'm going to turn it over to Captain Southwell. I've said enough. I believe I've stirred the heart of, of the ones who really care enough. In fact, let me say this. I don't believe that you need us, needed us here today at all. I believe if you really cared about this country, you already had enough information. We call it in the, in the, in the uh, clergy, uh, we call it preaching to the choir. And I believe I'm probably preaching to the choir now because you all know what I'm saying. But you're going to run into four types of people. You're going to run into the first group of people. Those are the people that are rational. They got their heads up. I mean, they know. They got their eyes open. They're aware of what's going on in America, and they're going to do something about it. Those are the ones who are suited for leadership. Then you got the second group of people. These are the people that are afraid. They're filled with fear. They're filled with grievances and anger. They're the ones that have been kicked around by the IRS and the VATF, and they've been kicked around by the state police, and they've been kicked around by politicians who they thought they could trust, who would answer the telephone, who would really call them back. Listen, you'll find that your brigade units will turn into a therapy group very quickly. You're going to have people coming to your brigade meetings who have been grieved and hurt and injured, and you, who are the leadership, are going to have to sit down and turn that anger into a potential, a righteous indignation to do something good, lest somebody does something terrible. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants some satchel charge to blow up some county building. Nobody wants somebody to walk in some crazed killer and start opening fire on our congressman. Don't let me say it, Lord. We don't want that. You're going to have a third group of people also that you're going to encounter. This is the group I call the tavern group. They sit around in the tavern and they, they find themselves immersed in the glories of the past. These people are still winning wars in World War II and Korea and Vietnam. They'll waste your time for endless hours telling you about how great the battle was back then. Those people are in a state of denial because they're afraid to look clearly at what's coming on the horizon. They're afraid to lift their head up and realize that the storm clouds on the horizon are far worse than anything they've ever seen before. And they would rather live in the glories of the past than to look toward the future. They're in a state of denial. Then there's group number four, the Roseanne Arnold group. More concerned whether the beer is cold and the popcorn's fresh 
and the soft, uh, the sophie is soft than they are about liberty. They're the ones I don't know and I don't care. Don't tell me this. Don't give me this literature. I don't really care. You can deal with group number one, the leadership people. You can deal with group number two, the ones that come to you for leadership. But I say to you, leave number three and number four alone. Just let them walk on by. The Bible tells us, contend not with a fool lest you become like him. And let me add to that, lest you waste time like that fool. Stay away from those people that just want to sit around and give you war stories. Tell, tell you how they used to do it. Or tell you how you ought to do it. You've probably heard that already, haven't you? People coming to you telling you how you ought to do it. Well, I say, by God, get out and do it, man. Do it. Don't just sit around and tell me how. Do it. Everybody's got an opinion. They're like noses. God give us men. A time like this demands. Strong minds, great hearts, true faith, and ready hands. Men whom the lust of office cannot kill. Men whom the spoils of office cannot buy. Men who possess opinions and a will. Men who can look into the eyes of a bureaucrat and damn his flattery without winking. Tall men, sun-crowned, who live above the fog in private duty and also in public living. For while they rabble with their thumb-worn creeds, their large professions and their little deeds mingle in selfish strife low, freedom weeps. Wrong rules the land and waiting justice sleeps. I say to you, it's about time that we wake up because justice is...